Yeah, I want to go over the final step on this HHO. This is the wiring itself, and um, just want to take a quick picture of it. Um, basically, there's an inline fuse that goes down to either the starter wire, or you can hook it directly to the battery. And then you have, that goes to the relay, and then on the relay there's also a ground wire. Then there's two wires, a double prong connector that goes on the relay that goes to the unit itself. And then the unit itself has two wires that are negatively grounded to the body. And on the switch inside, you have it where the key turns it on. One wire goes to a ground, which is the top, top lead. And then the middle wire goes to the relay. And the bottom wire on the switch goes to where your ignition is. So it's all installed. I actually installed it right after an hour after I did the last video and showed the higher output. I had to snug up the plates a little bit on there because there was a slight amount of leakage. You don't want the plates too tight. I didn't really do nothing with it when I got it. So I just left them the way the bolts were. But I had to snug them up just a little bit. And um, it's producing, I might need to take a little bit of electrolyte out of here because it's producing quite a bit. <laughs> but um, you can see what's coming up through the hose and this showed up a lot better actually um, on the uh, what do you call it uh, at night time actually a little bit better with the bubbles so anyway um, two wires go all the way back to the uh, relay which is be the bottom wire the bottom wire then this top wire on the relay um, goes to the battery or the starter and that's where it's fuse protected with a 30 amp fuse that's inside this holder um, you have the one wire coming off the relay which is a red wire uh, excuse me off the inside switch is the red wire which is goes to your uh, ignition so when you only it only works when the key is on um, the relay also has a ground and the switch inside also has a ground. This has a ground here. Now, when you go through the firewall, I use a plastic grommet and I fill this in with adhesive so there's no water. So the wires won't touch anything. They use wire loom for everything. So, now actually, this has been usually I can't just hit the key when it's this is a carburetor. Probably it'll start right up. Now normally I can't do that when the engine's cold because I have to choke it or pump the gas or give it gas. That is actually the HHO that's going into the carburetor. That's really why it started like that. But there's not so much that the engine can run off of it. But it's enough that it's going to give it a little more um, burn or whatever the hell you want to call it. So anyway, it looks like it's uh, it's a good setup. This was an actual add-on option I put on here. It's... Um, I made a little plastic holder out of it and put a bracket on here, doubled up some sheet metal, bolted it to the firewall and, not the firewall, the uh, inner fender, and pop riveted it and then truck bed lined the bracket. And this is covered with plastic, so it's a little bit insulated from weather and stuff. So at a, at a glance, I can look at what's going on. I didn't want to run anything inside the car because then I got to run hot wires through the firewall and. I didn't want to be doing that. I figured I'd just leave it here because once it's set, I'm okay. So that is the simple wiring. There's only this goes right back to the relay. Then you got a ground going to the body. And from the relay, that, that would go to the bottom of the relay, those double wires. There's a double connector. The top of the relay goes to the battery with the 30 amp fuse. This side. Of the relay goes to the ground which I have a ground it right here to where the body is itself and then um, the blue goes back to the switch the on off switch and then you have the red wire is coming off the on off switch goes to the ignition and then the top wire on the on off switch inside is actually just um, a ground so that's the on-off switch in here. See? Now it'll probably start up again. 
it's the HHO builds up in the carburetor and it starts up. Now when you turn the key off, everything shuts down, the switch shuts down, and the unit shuts down. So it's a little bit of a safety feature. It's a, it's a good setup. It's a good setup. The only thing I got to do, um, is I got, you heard the muffler, there's a little piece of pipe right after, right where the flange meets that needs to be replaced. I got that on order. It's only like a $20 pipe. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to be replacing that um, as soon as it comes in. But otherwise, these things should be all set. So, anyway, that's and uh, we'll be doing mileage tests. So, this is part three of three. I got one part on the brackets, one part on the plumbing, one part on the electric, and uh, yeah, one part showing the output. So, it's uh, it's a great setup. It's by Liberty Industries. This is only about this is a 16 plate unit. They got an 11 plate, I think they got a 21 plate. 16 plate is more than adequate for this little engine. Um, probably, um, I, I might expect, I think that's putting out at least a liter a minute. Actually, this I think is rated for over two liters a minute at the max. I think it's already putting out over a liter a minute. For this engine, that should be plenty. It might give me a 20% boost in mileage. If it does, it'll go from about 25 miles to the gallon to 30. And that's pretty damn good for a four wheel drive Jeep that's pretty damn good and I'll be happy with that so anyway over and out uh, just gonna do a simple update and complete uh, you know this would be part three out of three wiring